years ago when Margaret lived in this area, it was really, really country. And of course now they call it suburban country. Um, and but it's fitting that if you don't mind, I'm just I'm still about six feet away, but it's fitting that she is uh, buried right here in in a place that's nearby to all of her background uh, with her grandparents having lived in the area and her parents and uh, having been buried at St. Mary's in, in Milford. Even though most of her life, it sounds like she lived on the east side. It's fitting that she comes out to an area that was more like country for her. As we gather here together, um, just about a month and a half ago, all of the leaves on these trees were still, the trees were still bare. There was hardly any life at all. And, and yet we know that spring brings forth great new life. And we see it already um, taking place with the blooming of flowers and and all of these full once again. It's a reminder to us uh, that whenever we bury a person uh, as their body lies in the grave, we're praying that the Lord will raise up Margaret bodily. And part of the bodily resurrection says something about the uniqueness of each individual person, that God respects that uniqueness, that God loves each of us individually as, as an individual person with all of our good qualities and our little difficult ones, uh, with all that we are, uh, because our bodies are expressive of who we are. And, and so the Lord raises us up. Um, and what that will look like or anything, we don't know. Uh, but what the scriptures tell us is that we will be raised up, glorified in the way that Jesus Christ is glorified. And so our prayer today is... Um, one of memory of Margaret, but also, even most importantly, that we want her to fully be raised up into the fullness of life and one day bodily raised up into God's glory. So Jesus says, This is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it up on the last day. We ask you, Lord, to bless this place in which Margaret will rest. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you, and so you made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection, even as it claims our mortal body. Grant that our sister may sleep here in peace until you awaken her to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. And then she will see you face to face, and in your light will see light, and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Because God has chosen to call our sister from this life to himself, we commit her body to the earth. For we are dust, and it is unto dust that we shall return. But we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his own in glory. For he is the risen one, the firstborn from the dead. So now let us commend our sister to the Lord so that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise up her body on the last day. Just for a moment, I'll let us think of Margaret and all that she has meant to all of you, and the love that she has shared with you and you with hers. And just for a moment of silence so that we can give her over into God's keeping. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Margaret and assure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, you will rise with him on the last day. This family gives you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon her in this life upon them and knowing her. For they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us now and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith.